everyone, Misco Electric here. Today is Sunday, November 30th, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. I have some EV news for you. Electric cars are a fad. There is no way to charge. Good morning, Mr. Petrol. Now, if you owned your own gas station, how often would you pay more to buy gas from somebody else's gas station? And remember, more than 80% of EV charging happens at home. There's a lot of public charging. Earlier this year, we reported that California has more public charging ports than public gas pumps. Our country is on track to have more than half a million public charging ports active within the next four years, and most of the investment is private money, not government programming. Maybe you'll change your tune about infrastructure by the end of this episode. So let's get to the news. Back in July, we reported about Tesla's Lost Hills California supercharger station named Oasis, which was destined to become the largest Tesla charging station in the world. At that time, there were 84 stalls open to the public. Ahead of the busiest travel days of the year this week, Tesla activated all 164 V4 charging dispensers capable of delivering up to 325 kilowatts per port. Originally, they planned for 160 68, but the company has confirmed the current number to be 164. The site is positioned on California's Highway 46, roughly 146 miles north of Los Angeles, and fills an infrastructure gap on the San Francisco to Los Angeles corridor. But what sets the Oasis apart even more than the amount of stalls is how it delivers the energy for charging. The over 30-acre station operates virtually off-grid, harnessing 11 megawatts of solar panels in which many double as shaded canopies for vehicles below. These panels generate enough energy to power about 2,000 average homes annually, with excess energy stored in 10 Tesla Megapacks for 39 megawatt hours of battery capacity. The site's self-sufficiency sidesteps the typical months-long delays in grid upgrades to support such high draw. The site is connected to the power grid with a modest 1.5 megawatt connection for improved backup and expansion capabilities. With our own solar generation and mega packs, we have control of our timeline, delivering the needed capacity in under eight months from construction start, explained Tesla charging lead Max DeZager in an X post. The Oasis also includes 12 pull-through stalls for trailers and RVs, plus a dedicated lounge. Like most new supercharger locations, non-Tesla EVs can charge at the Lost Hills site too. Another unique supercharger opened this week near Tampa, Florida. The station located at a Suncoast Credit Union branch has eight V4 stalls delivering up to 325 kilowatts per port. The most interesting bit is that this is the first third-party location launched under Tesla's Supercharger for Business program. We spoke with the Tesla team who was advertising this at the EV Charging Summit in Las Vegas back in March. The first hardware buyer to market with a public site is Suncoast Charging. They've set the price at $0.45 cents per kilowatt hour for now, and Tesla handles all maintenance, software, and operations. Third-party stations integrate seamlessly into the Tesla app, Google Maps, and PlugShare, just like any other supercharger. The only difference is how the money moves around behind the scenes. Suncoast Charging plans to roll out 20 more Florida sites in 2026. Way back in episode 21 in July of 2024, we reported about the charging network partnership between Mercedes-Benz and Starbucks. This week, the duo officially unveiled its inaugural DC fast charging station at a Starbucks located in California. The new hub off Interstate 5 in Red Bluff features 400 kilowatt dispensers and is equipped with both NACs and CCS cables and is powered by renewable energy through a joint venture with MNA energy. 99 more Starbucks locations will get similar amenities as part of the $1 billion investment. Mercedes-Benz also made news this week, revealing pricing details for their latest EV, the 2026 CLA with EQ technology. The luxury compact sedan will start at $47,250 for the base 250 plus trim level. As a refresher, the rear wheel drive CLA 250 plus will be built on an 800 volt architecture and deliver 268 horsepower, zero to 60 miles per hour in 6.6 .6 seconds, and an EPA estimated 
generated 374 miles of range from its 85 kilowatt hour battery. The higher trim CLA 350 formatic, including all wheel drive, ups the power to 349 horsepower and 4.8 second acceleration, but trades some efficiency for a respectable 312 miles of range. This configuration will start at $49,800. Both variants support a peak 320 kilowatt DC charging rate, capable of recharging 100 miles in just five minutes or 202 miles in just 10 minutes. Deliveries of the new CLA are expected to begin in early 2026. Do you think the electric CLA is a fair price? Is Mercedes on the right track with these announcements? IANA, the eight automaker-backed EV charging consortium, announced a $250 million investment into its fast charging network across the state of California over the next three years. The investment reflects incredible EV demand in California, where over 29% of new car sales in the third quarter were fully electric. This expansion marks IANA's largest state-specific commitment yet, positioning California to host nearly a quarter of its contracted 4,000 ports. As we've previously reported, IANA intends to install and activate 30,000 fast charging points in the U.S. over the next four years. 30,000! For comparison, Tesla has been building out its U.S. network for 18 years, and they currently operate about 35,000 DC fast charging ports in the U.S. As a part of this investment announcement, IANA is also launching a statewide EV education program by partnering with local dealerships and advocacy groups for on-site events at each new site. The company has over 1,100 bays already live or under construction nationwide. Coincidentally, producer Tim and I will be flying to IANA's headquarters this week to have a look around, talk with leadership, and visit their flagship site for a standalone video. We've published similar coverage with ChargePoint, Electrify America, Blink, BTC, and ABB. Make sure you leave your questions in the comments so that we can include answers for our standalone IANA video. Of course, California is not the only state getting more EV charging. A year ago, GM Energy and ChargePoint announced that they'd be teaming up for a series of locations in 2025. They have now officially delivered with the first three dispenser site in Canton, Michigan. This station uses ChargePoint Express Plus hardware, which can deliver up to 400 kilowatts, supporting two vehicles simultaneously at 200 kilowatts. Additional sites offering another 37 more ports are slated for Dearborn and Livonia, according to the developer, a real estate firm called Debaja Brothers. We'll need hundreds of regional team-ups like this to flesh out DC fast charging infrastructure away from highway corridors. While most EV charging infrastructure is private, public federal funding along highway corridors is still underway too. The state of Wisconsin has resumed work paid for by the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure, or NEVI program. They've awarded $14 million in federal grants to build 26 new fast charging stations across the state. The announcement comes after a federal judge granted a preliminary injunction in June, blocking the current presidential administration's actions, freezing the funds, and paving the way for funds to flow again. The companies awarded the funding include the beloved regional gas station chain, Quick Trip, which is not to be confused with Oklahoma's Quick Trip. Quick Trip will build out 11 sites, while Universal EV was awarded eight and Tesla snagged three. The majority of the sites will include dispensers with both NACs and CCS ports. Most locations will have some pull-through charging bays as well. The latest round brings Wisconsin's total NEVI investments to $36.4 million for 78 projects statewide, serving the state's growing fleet of over 35,000 registered electric vehicles. 11 sites from the program's first wave are already operational, including the inaugural station which opened in January. Others are in construction or pre-build phases. With $54.6 million in unobligated NEVI funds remaining, the governor hinted at future expansions and community charging hubs in upcoming funding rounds. Applications for the next round open early next year. 
From the north to the south, the state of Georgia's Department of Transportation has also greenlit a major expansion of the state's EV charging program, awarding over $24.4 million in federal funds to deploy 26 new DC fast charging stations along key highways. The announcement marks the second round of NEVI program awards and accounts for a large portion of Georgia's $135 million NEVI allocation. Among the award winners were six companies, including Universal EV, Pilot Travel Centers, Love Travel Centers, Power Up America, EnviroSpark Energy Solutions, and Silver Comet Energy. Many of them were part of the first round of funding too. Nearly $35 million of the NEVI funding has been awarded so far in both rounds, just a quarter of the allocated funds. If you want to learn more about the state's plans, I'll link their NEVI sites below. It's always very interesting to see the wide disparity in construction costs by the winning bidders for a project with identical requirements. So it was a big week for EV charging news, right, Mr. Petrol? Anyway, we spent the past week traveling to and from California where we filmed with the Pebble Flow electric travel trailer for a couple hundred miles and two nights at an RV park. We gathered some great efficiency data and we'll spend the next week or two editing a detailed video sharing what we learned camping with it. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the alarm bell button if you'd like to be notified when we publish. These have been our top EV news stories for this week. Thank you for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride, go electric.